I would like to invite Pragati, Pragati Parajuli. She has been performing here for many times. She just finished her SEE, 10th grade, and she just started um, her 11th grade. Today is the first day, I think. So, yeah, welcome, Pragati. Uh, hi everybody, my name is Pragati and today I'm going to perform two poetries. The first one is called Pretty. You told me I look prettier this way. I believed you. You told me this is the best I've looked. I smiled. You told me you loved how I looked and I couldn't be happier. But when I took a step away from the best that I've looked back to how I am, you shook your head, told me I looked prettier before, told me I looked so much better, better than how I look now. You made me question myself. I believed you again. I believe that you liked the prettier me. I believed that you liked the best. I've looked so far me. I believed that I am worthy. I'm only worthy of being liked if I look a certain way. I believe that I will no longer be liked if I take a step back. I believed all of this. You made me believe all of this. I hid my tears because tears isn't what makes me look pretty. I hid parts of me because they did not make me look pretty. I threw away my beliefs because they apparently did not make me look pretty. The only thing that made me look pretty was if you thought I looked pretty. If you agreed that I looked the best and when I hid all of my everything I had because they all made me look not pretty, you shook your head. Disapproved again, but this time, this time I'd had enough. And this time I didn't want to believe you. After all, you decided that I had to give myself up to look pretty, to fulfill your beauty standards. And when I finally did, you aren't approving. What am I supposed to do now? You made me believe that I was nothing more than a six-letter word, that I cannot be beyond pretty, that my hair does not make me look pretty enough, that my nose does not make me look pretty enough, that my teeth do not make me look pretty enough, that my body does not make me look pretty enough, that I do not make me look pretty enough. You made me believe that I am only pretty when I am not me. Why? Why did you make me believe that hair, nose, teeth, body isn't pretty when they are all we have? Don't tell me I should have known better. Don't tell me I should have known better because I believed you. I believed you and I believed so many like you and I killed myself so many times so someone like you could approve of my pretty. My pretty hair, my pretty face, my pretty body, now I've had enough. I don't believe you. I don't have anything left to believe you with. My hair is not pretty, it's hair. My body is not pretty, it's body. I am not merely pretty. I am me. I am living, I am breathing, I am fighting, I am believing. Don't tell me to throw it away again because I don't know how long I can hold on to it. Who made you believe that a person can only be a person enough if they look pretty? Who made you believe that beauty is directly proportional to who you are as a person? Pretty is not a bad thing. It's actually a really pretty thing, but I am not just pretty. I am so much more. Thank you. Uh, so the next poem is called Feminist Who, and I wrote this poem really recently for this event, and here it goes. Hey, aren't you a feminist? Those faint, familiar voice pierce through my skin. The normal conversation that we were having has now turned into a debate. He says it like it's something that shouldn't be allowed to say. He says it like I'm supposed to be ashamed of it. Maybe he says it like he thinks I don't know what I'm talking about. 
and maybe I don't. Maybe I don't hold a PhD in gender studies, so maybe calling myself a feminist seemed more of an attention-seeking interest to him. He has the story that he loves to tell. The story is always in the tip of his tongue when every time someone speaks of feminism, he in inhales deep, fills in his lung and starts. He says he was in a local bus, a bus packed with many people, the hot summer heat exhausting everyone when this girl steps in, walks straight to this old man and asks, asks him to leave his seat. Confused, he asks why and she starts a rant. This is a woman's seat, she says, and I should sit here. After a huge tantrum, the old man gives up his seat and leaves, and she sits there proud of his accomplishment. She calls herself a feminist, he adds. The people around, they shake their head. I can see the look of disgust fill in their eyes, pleased with himself, he says again. See, I'm not against feminism, it's just the people who call themselves feminists that I dislike. In this statement, I ask myself, do I support what the girl did? No, no. If a guy can stand up in a bus, then so can a girl. So does that make me any less of a feminist? Confusion and questions fill up inside me, but I cannot show weakness now. So I look at him. I look at him and I say how I feel. I tell him that, yeah, it was, no, it was not fair. And for the first time, he looks stunned. Ask me again if I was a feminist. I can sense the hint of sarcasm in his voice, nodding my head like I'm trying to gather more thoughts to share, I explain. I don't think it's fair to the both of them, I say. The man who just chose a seat in a public transport unaware of the accusations awaiting his fate, unfair even to the girl, who has been compelled to live her life in such a way that maybe an ownership of a seat was just a boost she needed. I'm, I, standing here, don't have the authority to say if I was right or wrong, I say, because I don't feel the same challenges as she does. He says the concept of feminism has been changed, destructed even, I say, it's the time that has changed and the people who remain the same patriarchy and misogyny has filled the soul so deep that an automatic praise comes when the dad feeds the baby, but when the mother does it, it looked as it was her choice. Imagine the frustration we have to suffer to feel so powerless that one seat can give us hope. This is the condition they neglect. They, being everyone who thinks feminism is the attention-seeking scheme, unwilling to look deeper into the meaning, asking questions like, when did girls' education go to not wanting to cook the food? When did equal wages go to not wanting to marry anyone? The questions they ask, like having an option to choose, is something so outrageous that everybody has to object. Talking about equality is okay when it's for a broader topic, but they all have to come home to a married woman who cooked their food. When we talk about issues that go on in their home, ask them to ask their father what's for dinner instead of their mom. Ask them to talk to their bachelor brothers about marriage and their sisters about job. These people seem to disappear. They go back to whatever home they came from, see the patriarchy in the tea served by their mom while the dad is just waking up, see the patriarchy in the back ache of, the, of their mom as she goes to the kitchen right after coming home from work, and they say nothing. I remember how he said that he believed in equal rights for all. I remember when I asked him if he was a feminist and his answer would always be a no way with a little laugh at the end. His silence now reminds me of that moment. Something seems familiar with the silence and that reply of his. It makes me wonder, what if his laugh that time didn't signify him taunting me? What if it signified fear? Maybe he says he believes in equality because believing is easy. Anyone can believe in anything, but calling oneself a feminist was a declaration. 
It was more than just a belief. It meant having to write this poem. It meant having to fight with a stranger on the bus. It meant having to debate with almost every person you meet. It meant having to defend more than just your beliefs. It meant having to represent more than just your thoughts. And it meant choosing to be part of a revolution. Maybe the laughter was guilt hidden in disguise. Guilt of self-realization, realization that maybe he wasn't yet ready to have to be strong all the time ready to carry loads more than just his own on his back, but feminism needs courage like that. It needs to have dedication and faith strong enough to believe that even if you stand alone, you are brave enough to st start a revolution. Feminism taught me that. Taught me that believing and deciding go hand in hand, and now I have decided that every time you ask me if I am a feminist, my answer will always be a proud, loud yes. Thank you. Thank you, Pragati.